Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. America Level, but we gotta talk about establishing the Head Start programs. To choose dream of eradicating poverty. President Johnson established a Head Start program, an initiative. Under the auspices of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, just the first of what is hoped to be many by the Johnson administration, an effort to improve the flight of the young children in economically disadvantaged neighborhoods, but in particular those minority groups. Head Start offers some programs and evaluations to ensure that children from low-income families succeed in adjusting to elementary education and are sufficiently developed, of course, cognitively speaking, in order to succeed at school. Opposition from conservative circles has been somewhat muted, partially due to the fact that Papa's support for Head Start is fairly high. More vocal opposition and further encroachment on the state's prerogatives of education will amount should the administration choose to move that way. It's just first steps, of course. We've got some comments to go through, we've got some coffee, no Red Bull this time, and we've got uh, some poverty to eradicate, as well as help out the African nations, uh, and make sure that the Indonesian lands, or the lands over here, kind of uh, explode. Keep that open. We might need more command power. Actually, you know what, we're going to need more command power. MPP runs a good campaign, of course, in an election year. Um, other than that, not much else is going on, we don't need to do that either. A good RDC campaign, it's always welcome, but right now... We're going to lose two Democrats, though, which is not good. We do get eight Republicans. Overall, we will profit. Uh, MPP total does go down, which is decent as well. Um, can we go here? I really want the Upper South. They call it the Upper South. I always call it the Mid-Atlantic. That's how I was raised to see it as. But, let's see. Overall, anything else here? Not too much. We're assisting current programs still, which is fine with us. <clears throat> Office expansible rights. I don't want to touch that at all. Uh, stop gap measures, of course. Rural voters support National's Republican Party. It's August. I really don't want to do anything else that will hurt our polling numbers right now. God, I sound like a politician. Um, I don't want to do anything else that will like hurt our daily political power because 2.84 is really good. Uh, that's not too bad, too. Uh, we could do this every single day. Get more support for the Democratic Party. Healthcare for our nation. The U.S., a nation where no man should ever go uncared for, has failed to take care of its own citizens for decades. So-called healthcare industry consistently drives up prices on its services, pulling life-saving care out of reach for millions of Americans. Our reliance on the private sector to carry the burden of the country's healthcare has been misplaced. Now it's time for us to pick up the slack. President Johnson has proposed a series of programs to repair this fundamentally broken system. Regulations, financial aid, publicly owned or publicly funded options, all actions must be considered if we ensure the health of our citizens. Anything else we do here? Uh, not too much. I do want to help out as many people as we can, but we'll see. Now we're looking disabled. Not bad. And then Truman had the right idea. Yeah. Two decades ago, Senator Truman has proposed legislation that revolutionized the American healthcare system. Seeing the pitiful state of the health industry, he proposed widespread government action to address the growing problem. At the center of his proposal is universal coverage for all, covering all aspects of care and massive investment into the construction of hospitals throughout the country. This kind of action is long overdue, and so President Johnson has adapted many of the same policies championed by Truman in his campaign to ensure the nation's health. Good. Um, what else? Let's see. Anything here we really care about? I'd like to use authors napalm me. This is only 2%, though. We really need Angola and maybe a little bit of East Africa, like normal. Angola? Sure, why not? Better already, because we will need better already eventually. Um, now, one more. And if you about both of these, please go right ahead to change your leadership as well. Oh. Bruh. Don't tell me we lose that. But in the meantime, we've got some comments saying such as, uh, I'm a huge supporter, man. Although quite a small quite a small channel, your dedication to making videos is quite extraordinary. And I'm most happy when you see your video pop up and I recommend it. So, I appreciate it. If you're, all who watch, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I do like it, man. You know, I have people to watch. For people who watch me, I love it. Thank you for watching. Um, let's see, everything else here. 66, 68. Um, looking okay. Armored trains? Sure, why not? Temp tax hikes, 3.8% growth is not bad. 46.6% is not bad to do. Request from Mongolia. If you want to know about that, please go ahead. Approve the request. It's only money. Mm, so. MPP runs an incredible campaign. That's nice. That's nice. Good for them. But we run an excellent campaign, which is more important. Oh, wow. We're going to lose three. We're going to really lose them to the Republicans, aren't we? That's not ideal. But this should improve uh, us as well. Program cost goes up, which is not ideal. What do we get down here? Since, But we have no money. Or no political power, I should say. Also, going to this, please go ahead. We open up to the, those people. Uh, poverty rate begin to improve. Uh, increase funding. Improve health care. Um, Rural voters to continue to go to the nationals. I want to do this. Expand Medicare, of course. Well, let's do this one first. I want to wait. I don't mind getting more Republican support, because Republican support is fine for now. Increase Medicare payments. Oh, God. 
Um, if we could, I would, but we don't have enough political power. We only get less than 2.6 now, which is not ideal. Because we still need stuff over here as well. Large anti-air guns, which we're not really going to use either. Um, go and do that. It doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, we need to save some political power. As much as I want to do all that stuff. Oh! Hello. Oh, Cameroon's dead. Uh, someone says, the new Kazarak mod update has come out at the time of recording. I highly recommend you do a playthrough. After, again, after this one. We'll see. Maybe. I don't know. You never know. Um, September. French military alliance is here. Oh, offense. Of course, over there, too. I'm good old time. Angola, please. For the love of God, Angola, please. Uh, I will commit more troops if we have to. I'm not above that. So. Oh, hello. Any insurgency campaign? East Africa's looking better, but Angola's just looking god-awful. But happy October, everybody. Happy, happy October. Truman had the right idea, protecting the most vulnerable. Like so many other economic crises, the ones most affected by our defective healthcare system are the nation's poor. Even as the advancement of technology marches forward, they're tragically left behind and swindled out of the care they need. And many of the first acts to improve the situation, President Johnson signed a list of executive orders and urged legislation through Congress. These primary, primary, preliminary bills, which do little on the long run, aim to protect those who cannot take care of themselves due to the unchecked distortion of the healthcare industry. Oh, distortion. Uh, that's not good. Angola, please. I refuse to pull out, though. When in doubt, I do, don't pull out. Anyways, um, Solid South is not bad. One, one, one. There are a lot of just one staters. Uh, I did that last time. We're doing okay on command power, so we'll close out of that one for now. Can't get any more political power there. Oh, I want to do this one. Okay, we'll do that one. We're strong on welfare. 22 billion, so not bad. 3.6% growth, 46 billion percent debt to GDP ratio. Minus 0.32 is very strong, though. Um, but we're not really close anywhere improving our current societal levels, which kind of sucks. But it is what it is, you know. Pause update, nice. Come on. <laughs> Revisit the WMD bill. In 1945, Senators Wagner, Murray, and Delgo. Dingle proposed legislation to Congress to reform the nation's healthcare system. They introduced WMD, would have instituted a national hospitalization program accessible to all Americans. Unfortunately, in those times of strife, such a radical change was swiftly struck down before it could pass. Now it seems the bill's time has come. Through a new one revision of the WMD bill, we can soon implement its most beneficial qualities. The goal would then become the creation of a national system aided by the government directly. For this uh, health care stuff on it. And then we get down here. Improve health care and get more Democrat support too. But happy November! And we're just going to lose some Democrats, which sucks. Hopefully we can recruit some more when we have the next presidential election for President Johnson. But you never know. Well, that'd be more, yeah, that's pretty good. It's the economy, darn it. Yeah. Keep it up, even though we shouldn't really do that all the time. Oh, my God. Angola. Angola. For the love of God, Angola. What's that one real quick, then? Stop gap measures. Um... Oh god. Yeah, I'm not gonna click on that. Republicans, good RDC camp. Now I'll do that. Like most of the major changes in federal policy, <clears throat> expansion and creation of the welfare system will take some time due both to the opposition and the overall sluggishness of the American system of government and implementing reform, however. Uh, for the moment, the more gradual and incremental uh, measures can be taken to temporarily quench the need for aid. Most of these programs will be short-lived and only providing fixes in the short term that give economic assistance to the needy. Much greater projects are coming down the pipeline, but a reminder to the people that something uh, is being done to address these issues will go a long way. Stop getting measures, expanding social security. It's not bad. Because we did finish this side already, which is pretty nice. Incentivize insurance companies? We're making great progress in a campaign to institute a national healthcare system, but in order to fully implement such a system, we'll have to enlist the support of the very insurance companies who have caused the problems we seek to address. To do this, we'll provide financial incentives to those corporations in the form of subsidies to secure their assistance as we write more legislation. While the practices are unsavory, we might need a, their cooperation if we hope to right the wrongs. Blue Cross Blue Shield lose even more political power. Increase more stuff. Um, amend the Hill Burton Act. I like that. Maybe. The Hill Burton was the landmark piece of legislation for the healthcare reform in the United States. Passed in 1946, the Act gave significant loans to hospitals, who then promises to provide services to customers who cannot afford payment, even with included insurance. The Act has been successful in not only caring for those who cannot easily care for themselves, but also improving the services they receive. Now, due decades later, we're going to visit the bill. Through the addition of modifications that will further improve the healthcare situation, we can move once closer to universal coverage. Ugh. Angola, please. 
Uh, but now let's go look at this, and we've lost two Democrats. They've lost five. They got seven more Republicans. So we're 60 RDs, which is not bad. Uh, the cops include, all the way with OBJ, go super progressive. Go break up with the Republicans. Option, it's more progressive. Oh, break up with the Republicans. <clears throat> well, I mean, after the recent vote we just had, there's only uh, 17. That's still not bad. If we get all Democrats and then some progressives and then the Republicans, some few of them will vote for us. We'll see. So else says, uh, please interfere in the French Civil War. Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Covering millions of citizens, it'll have to undertake and that we should never, can never manage on our own. To revenue to the situation, we must draw from the existing insurance market to handle these issues. The Blue Cross, Blue Shield Association is a fantastic candidate for the implementation of Medicare, Medicaid, and other nationwide insurance programs as proposed by the Johnson's Great Society. Existing as an association of various insurance companies across the country, the organization will be vital to our plans going forward, but reign in the AMA. The American Medical Association is the largest association of physicians in the United States including tens of thousands of doctors from across the country. It's stated to go as the betterment of public health as it plays a critical role in physician specialization in the medical system. <clears throat> the organization also has significant political clout, often partaking in copious lobbying for interests that are often against their own stated goals. With this in mind, we must recognize the importance of gaining their support before we pass any more legislation. Whether through favors, grants, or possibly threats, we will bring the AMA into the fold. Ah, uh, as we should. Trains are nice. It's only 67. And now it's April. Happy April, everybody. Strongly worded letter, huh? Um, if you remember this, please go ahead. I hear Bear resign as ambassador for the United States of America, huh? Alrighty. Uh, this is still playing a dangerous game here, which I hate, hate, hate. Uh, 5%? Oh, God. Um, 2%, 5%, 5%. Do that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. And then the workplace healthcare act. The workplace healthcare act is the next step in a gradual march towards a robust and federally supported insurance system. Soon as a check on the often harmful and abusive policies of insurance companies, the act proposes a number of protections for the nation's consumers. These include the obligation for price transparency. <clears throat> And visibility to prevent exploitation requirement that all companies provide insurance regardless of pre-existing disability, sex, or any other conceivable factors for years. Corporations tasked with providing insurance have used their privileged, privileged positions to profit off the struggles of unwilling customers. This newly proposed act will prevent such practices. Leave it in my interview. You don't know about that. Was good head. And Beach Boys really smiles. There you go. Cool. Certified gold. Cool. And what else? 25 billion is not bad. 41.7 billion is not bad. Growth is okay. Inflation is a little high for my taking, but for the greater good. <clears throat> if you remember that, please go ahead. We're strong on healthcare and welfare. Interesting. Oh. Jamaica's in chaos. What's any inspiration, huh? Balance is uncommon. Favor, favor is uncommon. Uh, I don't think I read this one before, so. Uh, his control is slipping, the Prime Minister is. He's after all helping suppressing the riots, so reducing the fervor enough for things to be smoothed over. But as long as the protests continue without change, the risk of them turning violent only means in to get increased. <clears throat> I hate this part so much. Alright, so let's see. Can we pass a bill? Oh, everyone has. Every party has members who wants the Workplace Healthcare Act. <clears throat> 40. We have more than enough. Almost all the Democrats want it. Two thirds of the Republicans want it. Ha a more, a more than half the Repo progressives want it, and even a, a little more than a quarter, maybe a third of the Nationalists want it too. A little less than a third. Unrest quashed in Jamaica. Oh, Federation. Let's see. That was fast. <clears throat> Public and political power from that. Yeah, that was the fastest I've ever seen in any one of those things ever completed. Nice. I hate this part so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. We definitely need more command power. Jesus Christ, so bad. And the pressure of the states. Predictably, many states have opposed the passage of further legislation in Congress and have been reluctant to participate in the implementation of the programs. Admittedly, the effects on state level budgets have been stressful, but with the sufficient reorganization, they should be manageable. To encourage participation in a newly constructed system, what's the pressure on the cooperation? This way, this could manifest our extensive but negative and, <clears throat> and positive reinforcement are both on the table. Like giving benefits to states to states who adopt our programs and threatening to revoke critical funds in other areas who do, to those who do not, we keep the states in line. Give more political power too. Ah, it succeeds. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today in Washington, 
The Senate finally took the side of the consumer over the health care giants. With new regulations of health industry companies and subsidies, many Americans previously denied coverage or facing massive medical bills for needed surgery will finally have options. Insurance companies will no longer be able to charge patients with pre-existing conditions, different rates than other consumers, nor will they be able to deny them coverage. Further federal regulations aimed at suppressing the rising health care costs to protect consumers. The bill's positive effects become clear almost immediately. One good example is a construction worker named Vito Corelli. A few years ago on a job, his hand had been injured in an accident. While it avoids more than an amputation, nerve damage rendered it nearly useless. Any doctors who have taken a look had quoted him such an eye pop and some that he nearly fainted. After the new workplace health care act provisions kicked in, he had the surgery done for a single three hundred dollar copay. With a few weeks of rest and plenty of physical therapy, he was back to coaching his little son's little league teams again. Stories like that multiplied across the country, Americans finally getting the health care they needed. Each old person rendered a whole new again that they had Johnson President Johnson to thank. No society could be great unless sickness had been eradicated and this new law goes some distance to achieve the goal. Finally, some affordable health care, affordable care, and patient protection. So emergency support is replaced with low income protections, more political power, better monthly population, better stability, more cost, better poverty, and health care quality. Remove dealing with the AMA, which is good. Um, let's improve health care. Nice. Um, Angola. Alright, yeah. God, I hate Angola so much. 23, not bad, not bad. 41% is not bad. Pressure the states. Now, I do want to get down here because that's pretty good to get. We'll go there next. We'll wait for civil rights until the very end. And it's expanding Social Security. Social Security has played an enormous role in combating poverty and helping the age and affirm. No one denied it's one of the most popular programs that have prevented some of the worst issues of the Great Depression, but we have to step back and realize how it's not, not enough to get the results we wanted or need. Social Security will be set up to properly take care of those who cannot work. It will provide more benefits to the people under its purview, especially for those who are disabled. No longer will it be a simple program with old age insurance. It will provide wide ranging relief to people who cannot take work due to uh, unfortunate fate or passage of time. We'll once again read from that, that regardless of the challenges one may face, but will not be left behind by this union. Not bad. There's not a lot of events for Johnson. It seems a bit odd, because usually with a lot of these, you know, uh, presents, we have more events to read, but, you know, sometimes it's okay to not have events to read. Um, so we'll probably keep sweet talking to the Republicans. We'll actually probably take this one once we do one of the uh, focuses that lowers uh, support for this. So. so we'll do that one, because this one lowers support. So we'll do like, something like this, and then do some more stuff as well. On uh, the moderates of content, Mr. President, we got more of the great society passed through Congress with a wide range of majorities in support of these proposals and ideas. Uh, have been receiving polls for the past few months. And general people are with us in Congress, including the RDC and much of the MPP, are still supportive, so we can expect uh, the bipartisan support need to get through more strength. Conservative, huh? No, get through more. That said, some of the more conservative and moderate members of the Republican Democrats are talking to his staffers on Capitol Hill. And you're feeling like we've already done a good job, and maybe we should start. Uh, winding down the great society. One senator even said we've got done enough for this decade, and we should let this next generation get a chance to do some other stuff. Oh boy. Well, no one's breaking away and refusing to go along, we'll most likely start seeing more resistance from the Republicans, and even some of the conservative Democrats. We we'll believe that the great society has gone far enough. Any further great society acts can start arousing concerns of everything they like, they like to worry about, like tax types, debt, socialism, and states' rights. We should take this into consideration as we go forward. Duly noted. Well, god dang it. This stuff should just all jump up when we get there. That's a good amount of political power, though. Um, you can't lift yourself up by the bootstraps. Many opponents of uh, the President Johnson's welfare measures argue that individual responsibility and hard work are the part. On the poor is the only reasonable way to address their woes rather than federal aid. Those arguments are purely anecdotal, with a little base in reality, as millions face barriers into entry into the workforce that are often powerless to overcome. Since they're unable, to, uh, through no fault of their own, to escape these conditions, help and hand from the government's necessary. Spreading the message to Congress and the larger populace will be vital in implementing future programs. If you want to be at the nomination of Thurgood Marshall, please go ahead. Confirmed by the Senate. Vote will be held in 15 days. Um, this will displease the black community. It will be more progressive. Which is um, not a bad thing. Obviously, we prefer to be Democrats in this campaign, but, you know, whatever. And... Sixty-seven. I've always running out of things to research. Do that because again, uh, right? I hate this stupid critical list. Of the two percent just not good enough. Commit more troops. We'll probably do that one. Get more command power first. Oh, so third good marshal. Okay, so the Democrats love it. The progressives love it. Even the four of the nationalists love it. Um, and then even the Republicans don't mind it as well. So that's thirty plus the uh, twenty. Thirty. Thirty plus thirty is usually sixty. So I'm not even concerned anymore. Uh, we got the political power for it. Spend it. We're very strong on health care. God, health care in this country, man. Good lord. Minus 0.31, less than 20%, not bad. 
Uh, reshoot the public, reshoot the party. Uh, there's this one too. I guess we'll reshoot the party as well. An important something here. Uh, part of implementing President Johnson's Great Society reforms will be party loyalty. So far, Republican support for these eight programs have been strong, but in order to gain lasting support, deals in other areas will have to be made. Through presidential remarks and co-op is a, a log rolling, Johnson and his endorsers will need to gain the backing of the Republican Party to push the next round of bills to Congress. Votes from their base will prove invaluable in the fight to pass further legislation. Of course it will be. Hey, it's confirmed. A man who wants to clear that you do what you think is right and let the call catch up will now sit on the most important judicial institution in the United States. In decisive vote today, their good marshals confirmed as the newest associate justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Marshall, we the first African American to serve on the court, and his confirmation is undoubtedly a victory for the civil rights movement, which he himself has worked tirelessly to advance during his confirmation uh, hearing. A number of conservative senators rallied, railed against judicial activism and made a variety of statements that American commentators have called little better than dog whistles. Some even asked whether or not Marshall had ties to American Bolsheviks. The strategy failed, though. At a press conference today, Pro Justice Marshall uh, stated his gratitude to the Senate and to the people of America before posting for pictures with his two sons and his wife, the civil rights activist Cecil Suzat. So yeah, Marshall. It's a truly historic moment for the nation, representing the triumph of justice over institutional racism. Let's hope so, anyways. Screw it. We need it right now. So we'll get nothing from that one. We'll get 5% more, 8% total, 11%. It's just never enough. Uh, CIA, let's keep this back open now, because we get never know. We can do that stuff. Advantage Social Security. More good decisions. All right, well, we'll probably need more political power in the future, too, but... Uh, civil rights. Yeah, I know we're not very much. Decrease the support among conservatives, help the environment. Conservative protests, social security expansions, of course. Uh, fun cleanup, but why not? Opposition to the social security expansion has become the latest battleground for the divided American legislature. Attacks and criticism against the act from factions of both parties become a near daily occurrence, of course. And the steadfast refusal of the president to demand this piece of legislation is starting to cause considerable consternation to the Republicans, wing of the RDC. Privately and ever more publicly, the president's being accused of putting his personal agenda before the party, endangering the alliance of the core of the Republican Democrats. Across the South, and in their strongholds in the rest of the country, the national faction of the MPP is announcing the expansion. <clears throat> in even clearer terms, according to them, the act is an overt attack on the American middle class, and subs be paid to the Negro by the white working man. The strategy appears to be uh, to tie increased welfare and higher payments to the issues of civil rights, and according to the reports trickling back to Washington, it seems to be working. Many previously Republican districts are beginning to lean MPP. As more of the governing party was rocked by the news of a handful of lawmakers, including the three senators, crossing the aisle and officially switching to the MPP, while the move was condemned by both wings of the RDC in a rare show of unity, and there doesn't seem to be any more defections to the media horizon, it was a powerful reminder of the fragile structures underpinning Johnson's coalition. Our ranks go grow slimmer. Well, let's open up smoke and mirrors. Alright, so lofty, strong, durable, terrific, durable, dur uh, durable, terrific. The coalition is durable support, terrific, over approval. Seem okay. Um, I'd be in divorce, so I took a while to do. Uh, labor support will increase by five percent. Union voters. Excuse black turnout. Fuck it out. What is this? Ongoing leadership play. I'm not selected. Has been thwarted. They lose political power. Um, okay. Yeah, the Dixocrats are... Faction health is poor. Coalition support's okay, though. Conservatives across the aisle. Uh-oh. Uh, some Republicans are beginning to support the idea of increased funding for Social Security. Oh, that's good. While the concerns with how this will be handled and funded, it would be much of expansion. how much expansion will entail, this responsible Republicans have a solid deal. Our rights, ranks now grow thicker. Interesting. Hardline and Dixocrat Republican and Democratic support will increase. We lose 50 political power, which sucks. Don't get me wrong. So Harlan Republican and Responsible Republican both will decrease. So we're going to try. We did read this one. Progressive recognition. We're going to be this piece good ahead. An old ally returns. Uh, reject us. Well, an old ally returns. Oh, wait, what? Oh, was that a crisis thing? I'm sure the party. Yeah, we need this one. We do need more political power, though, but still. Getting okay-ish. There goes Finland. The town's growing. It's been a while since I played a Russian unifier, huh? Command bar is looking okay as well. Check the pro-American sentiment. Provide tax relief. Get to improve poverty more. Support or Democrats for three weeks. For support of the Republican Party for one week. Trim more liberal issues of economics policy. And responsible Republican and Labor Democrat support increases more. It's not bad. Almost three political power every day. I love it. 
Be sure the public, while support for the Republican establishment is none less important, gaining the approval of the public at large is the most critical aspect of any campaign for the large scale reform so far. The people have been reluctant to get behind the Great Society concept. To allay the concerns, the president must go public through direct uh, addresses via the radio, television, and other mediums. The aim of these uh, measures is not only to encourage voting in like minded members of Congress, but also to pressure, pressure current Congress members. Happy September, everybody. You know what? It's already. We're not that far into the video. It's like 25, 26 minutes in. And we're coming up on the last third of this year. And next year, it's another election year where Johnson is going to have to compete again to see he's still going to remain president. Crazy. Less than 40% debt GDP ratio, 4% growth. Inflation is still pretty much where it has been all, all the campaign so far. 92 is not bad, too. Oh, please don't get going. Oh, it's not, it's not going down. That's pretty good. Um, so I don't want to touch it too much. We will do on goal again because we have enough command power for that. I might even go a little crazy here and start influencing this a little bit more. Escalation. I want to escalate it higher. Increase it by 5%. Yeah, heck yeah. You got the political power for it. We click on that. Authorize Air America Operations. And now it has just exploded. So at least we can do something else besides just doing all the other stuff. But um, uh, If you want to read about this again, please go ahead. I, it, was worry, it was right to worry about how long this facade could last. So now we can bomb the loving shnikes out of them, which is fine with us. I love bombing people. I'm an American. If we're not bombing people, we're not happy. Uh, bone steel, huh? Here. Yeah, honestly, it should not be that difficult. As long as we can send some planes. Maybe not. Oh, well, crap. Oh, wow, 43. Okay, so I don't care about any of this stuff. That's what I care about more. Africa, I don't know. I care more about Africa right now. So since we're down here, provide tax relief. Yes. Should I spend extra political power? Probably not. But well, that's okay. 28 billion, not bad. Fine, a little bit of action. Level 5, all hecky. Pretty sure the public, and since someone wanted me to go with a comment here, we're going to buy inside the third right, please go ahead too. Fascinating read. A unity above all is nice, but break with the Republicans. The token reassurance is to the party staff have proven insufficient to gain their full support and push for Social Security expansion and further reform and for further programs. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the Republican leaders have failed to listen to the very, very uh, constituents who elected them to their privileged positions, and they have been unceasingly reluctant to commit to President Johnson's initiative. For this reason, <clears throat> And ties must be cut with this corrupt establishment of any future progress to be made. Hopefully a new coalition can be formed to finish what the president started. I hate this. Change of leadership does makes no sense for us. Man, why is it? What, why? Why do we get penalized for that? That literally makes no sense to me. Like, thankfully, Ang Angola is now much more at peace right now, and they're not causing any too many issues, and we're okay, but... Still. Still. Let's out of that one for now, too. Uh, we can probably visit this one probably until at least next year, sometime next year. But middle of that, that's not bad. Very strong on healthcare. Love it. Go in and just blitz them all. My mom's face gone, huh? Ventilate wall. You can remember that, but you're gonna have that before as well. Random questioning, I've heard that one too. Uh, roughly three days, never enough. This could be dangerous. Break of the Republicans. The progressives show their support, which is not bad, but we only need to talk with them too next. So that's the next one we're gonna choose. Um, a duty to our people. Oh, we need more political power. Crap. Since its transformation under L President LBJ, the Democratic Party has become the party of the people, by the people, and for the people. To gain further support from the public for Social Security, it's time to entertain a different route of appealing to voters. Through, fo through further outreach, the people must understand that the President and his loyalists in Congress must truly believe in the cause of hope and the need, and the party is to adopt the mandate to assist people whenever they are suffering or justice. Sit down with the teachers' unions. Public teachers' unions, notably the American Federation of Teachers, wield a tremendous amount of influence over the education system, which is mostly ex executed through campaigning and lobbying. Since we'll be the ones educating children, the vitalized education system, winning support, especially for ambitious legislation, will be critical to the implementation of many programs. So hopefully, the Code Alliance, members of the Department of Health and Human Services, will meet with union leaders across the country to gain support, meaning some promises will have to be made. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Request for funding? That's fine. It's only money. Uh, that's not ideal. <clears throat> Random question, you go into that, please go ahead. Next.
African Quagmire, how's it looking now? It's looking alright! It's actually, actually going up! Nice. Um, let's finish this side off first. As much as I want to go down south, I don't finish those guys off and finish these guys up here as well. I love TNO too much, probably. But happy November! I guess there are social things going on, but I've read them so many times, I guess I'm just not I'm done reading them for now. Go in, go in, come on, come on. Hey, the progressive show their support, look at that. While facing the opposition in his own party, President Johnson all another approach to Social Security Act has found a source of support outside it, the centrist faction. Uh, the National Progressive Party, Henry Scoop Jackson, has spoken warmly on the bill on multiple occasions, of course. And this morning, contacted, contacted, contacted the administration on behalf of a group of senators from the progressives. They're pledging their votes to ensure the passage of the Social Security Expansion Act in its current comprehensive state. President Johnson has hailed in support as proof of the broad appeal of the act and an important victory for the great society. Jackson, on his part, explains the support for the act and willingness to cross out a pass as proof of his commitment to America and the welfare of the common man. We wish her votes welcome. Beautiful. you guys come up here. Towing the party line, no one in the White House or the halls of Congress could avoid sensing the recent shifts in the atmosphere. Relations between the main wings of the Republican and Democratic coalition are at a low, with accusations putting personal agendas. <clears throat> uh, uh, putting personal agendas ahead of the party unity and stability abounding behind closed doors. And a relationship that was never warm in the first place is cooling further. The latest fall line is the passage of the Social Security Expansion Act, which is clearly more important to the president than keeping the Republican wing of the party content, unfortunately. For now. Uh, great effort has been expanded in recruiting every supporter of the act and pressuring, badgering, and bullying its detractors into submission. Most of the Republican lawmakers have fallen in line, seemingly judging that they still have too much to lose if they publicly speak out against the coalition. For many Republican voters, though... Let's take another instance of the Democratic wing happily taking the votes while ignoring the interests, feeding a growing sense of disfranchisement with the party. Also feeding the sense are the firebrands of the Nationalists, who are oft finding a waiting audience for the condemnations of the Socialist in Chief and its attacks on the white working American man of America. The cost of doing business. We're going. To oh, crap. I should not have done that one. My bad. Uh, let's cancel it. Let's do that one first. My bad. I should not have done that one. But we're going to have to pay for this all somehow. The unfortunate reality is that every dollar we spend has to come from somewhere else. While simply deficit spending may be an option in other cases, the unique nature of Social Security as an insurance program makes this not an option. Every dollar we spend must come from someone in some way, or we will not be able to provide benefits and the structure will collapse. So, as unpopular as it is, we'll have to take money from Peter to pay Paul. We have multiple options on how to do this, and each has their own benefits and downsides. Simply increasing the payroll taxes already in place could pay for it, or uh, could raise income taxes in order to provide for the program. Whatever the choice, we have to pick one, hope it doesn't anger Congress to kill the bill. Which, I, I've always thought about this. The dance partner, if you want to do that, please go ahead. Um, with Social Security, like, even in our timeline, like, right now, as, as I always said, it's going to be, like, not def it's not going to default. You can't default on Social Security. But, like, the payments won't be as much. I wish it was just slightly more, because the, the dad for Tino have done a great job with the mod so far. Um, even though I bitch and moan all, all, all the time, and I know some of the dads really don't like me, because I bitch and moan too much. Sorry. Uh, my apologies. But, like, we have, the, like, social things here. Population grew. Rose of the... Ranks of the poor shrank by almost six million. Uh, almost a million women joined the workforce. Stuff like this. What about like population growth? What if, or population? Or, like, does it go like continually go up? It doesn't always go. I guess it technically could go up, but like, how in depth you would really want it to get, which probably would probably be too in depth to like model our current system. Uh, but you know, this is still to you know, like, the projection of how social security would work with current population growth trends. Uh, how big the middle class is de depending on the characteristics, which is, I guess, you know, huge to figure out and stuff like that. But I just thought something if they, the devs were thinking about that because you don't want to make it too complex that people are like, what the heck is going on? But I don't know. I've always thought about that. I've always liked that idea. I always like talking about Social Security sometimes and the program and whatnot. Blue on blue. If you want to talk about blue on blue, please go right ahead. Stuff not just like the hometown nobody knew. Now I'll do the other one. Get down there. Oh, you're already down there. Nice. Assessment of the teachers' unions. One of the placard or plan uh, landmark pieces of legislation President Johnson helps to pass the so called Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Well, the draft is, is still rough. The ESEA will increase federal funding to schools across the board, as well as focus on parental involvement in public education. While well, I was in Congress, scrapped the bill itself and marshaled congressional support and ensured its easy passage, the President himself is elected to meet with the most powerful teachers' unions in the country and ensure the support for his newest initiatives. One of the most notable demands of the unions is to relax federal control over the methods by which teachers may engage with students and teach coursework in the classroom. There's already been some strong opposition to such a proposal, as it may allow dissident and un-American ideas to proliferate among young children and teenagers in their schools. Furthermore, 
promising such a reform, maybe we can support among conservative Republicans and the staunchest anti-communists and anti-fascists others, however. Positive that may be a new radical step in allowing personalization of education. Tailored towards this, the individual needs of the students and may overall improve the quality of education of our young people. Reforming education is part and parcel of established great society. Perhaps we shouldn't go so too far. Ah, oh, we I want to do that one. Oh man. I love this. I never spent any time here at all. Look at stock, stockpiles not bad. We could wipe out only 46% of humanity. Well, that's not enough. Complaints of federal overreach. Oh, God. Though it started proving pretty popular with among the most general public and among policymakers at every level of government, President Johnson's coming under accusing assault by the conservatives, many within his own party, that accused him of tyranny for having his overstepped his balance or his plans to greatly expand the mandate and the scope of the federal government. Several southern governors, backed by the state legislatures and supported by numerous federal congressmen, have demanded that the president guarantee several privileges in education that belong to the states and the states only, in an effort to stem the tide of what they termed increasing federal overreach, bordering on federal tyranny. Um, the president's supporters, as well as northern liberals, have urged Johnson to push forward in his program, criticism be darned, thus determined as ever, of course. President Johnson has continued to forge ahead on his legislative agenda. The southern Democrats and conservatives generally within the party are none too pleased. Petty squabbling cannot be allowed to stem the tide of progress. Well, we come here. We can do okay. Um, can we do any more political power yet? Keep that open for now. Smoke and mirrors. Um, strong, lofty, durable, terrific. Durable, terrific, poor, terrific. 95%. Word of coalition is okay. Heartland Republican support will decrease by 10. Dixiecrat support will decrease by 10. I wasn't concerned about the Dixiecrat. Their faction health is really bad. Um, see the Supreme Court. We have four conservatives, five liberals, economic expectations. Um, 404 billion. Well, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, yeah, we need more. No. Mm -hmm. We'll see. So, hardline Republican support. Hardline Republican support. Hawkishness decreases. Hardline Republican support will increase. No, I don't want to do that. That pursues deregulation. Should we succeed for increase by 10%? 10. Anything else here? Hardline Republican support. Uh, that's, that's more difficult to do. But improve civil rights bear within 60 days. Responsible. That's pretty easy to do. Responsible. So, resolve foreign. If you head on the firing line, we're not going to be deregulating anything. So, we'll do that one. Okay. Call Russell. Oh, oh my God! I gotta stop doing that. Oh my God! I'm so bad. I'm so bad. God dang it! Assess material needs. The implementation of new education programs will doubtlessly be a costly undertaking, and the one thing central to this initiative will be ensuring that schools are correctly stocked. To determine what is needed and where, an examination of the nation's individual schools is necessary. Once the census can be concluded, the process of apportioning textbooks into the classroom supply funds to state and local governments can begin so that every school has its tools for modern, efficient education. Material provisions. The final stages of the debate surrounding the ESEA have begun. How much money should be committed to the program? The growing coalition of conservatives who find themselves increasingly opposed to the president's education policies have requested a more watered-down appropriations commitment to the bill. Lessening the strain on the federal budget can allow for improved budgets for the Department of Defense, or simply save off any risk of budgetary default in the future. The President's allies in the Congress believe that it is wholly likely, wholly likely, for the bill to pass even with a stronger financial commitment to the primary and secondary education. The question is whether the President wishes to further strain his relations with the powerful conservative lobby within his party, for Johnson's part. He would sooner scatter the most virulent opponents to his agenda to the four winds, but as Johnson learned in all his four years of his, or in all his years of the Senate, sometimes in politics other considerations must be made. Government is best, which is close to the people. Can't afford to agitate conservatives right now. Also, right now, we look at the predictions. We're, gonna, we're predicted to gain 10 more Democrat senators, which is kind of insane. So, we're doing okay. As we still need to finish up in Indonesia and whatnot, so. Um, you guys go there, do that, and do there, whatever it is you need to do. Nice. Kick them out, kick the, these people up too. Go there. Hello. Budgetary concerns rain down, fell down in great sheets over Washington and Lyndon. I cannot in good conscience allow this bill. President Johnson's hands were in his pockets. Oh crap. Uh, his gaze out of the south lawn. A peal of thunder in the distance briefly overwhelmed the soft patter of rain on the windows of the Oval Office. Senator Russell was here again voicing his concerns with the administration's agenda. With all respect, Lyndon, he must take care to respect the wishes of the constituents throughout the south. And not just mine, in Georgia. A great number of good people do not think dumping millions into this program will do much to improve the welfare of the Negro children. Johnson suddenly drew himself up. Uh, his eyes just light. He snapped on his heels and briskly walked up to Russell, planting himself in front of him. The nose were an inch apart, the buttons on the jackets were touching. This was boom, Senator. I do not give a rat's butt about those darn constituents. I have not met with every member of the Congress, held meetings with 20, 
teachers unions across the entire country crafting this bill to perfection just to be told no by a few bigots voting for a party to which I know no allegiance. Wilson froze his lips tight, his eyes staring into the president's. It was a moment of silence. Calmly, Johnson continued, Senator, I would ask you kindly to relay your to your colleagues that my position on this is final. That's all. Okay, Lyndon, as you wish. The president turned back around, walking past the rest of the desk, again staring out of the rain-drenched window. And you'll address me as Mr. President. They will not crush us. Social Security Expansion Act. Large revamp of the social, American social infrastructure, or insurance, I should say, project since its inception. Social Security Expansion Act is a product of months of thought, negotiation, and fist slamming. Now to go to the floor of the Congress to debate. And they'll have a lot of pour over. And there's better large expansions of benefits for the people previously covered by the program. Unemployed. Uh, retired dependents all will see much greater relief thanks to this act. In their ranks, too, will be disabled people who are unable to support themselves due to injuries. It's up to Congress to pass this act without delay so we can finally provide millions of struggling Americans with peace of mind and allow them access to a little better way of life. Paying the piper. Now that the shape of the Social Security Expansion Act is more or less settled, all that remains is to decide how to fund it, of course. The projected cost of the program is substantial and there's no room for it to, uh, to pay for it in the current budget. This means the President and his administration have no other option than to enact new taxes, of course. <clears throat> There are two main camps within the administration. The first proposed a new tax on income specifically to support Social Security. Now, a new tax is never going to be a popular proposition. They believe that it can make it easier to swallow for the electorate by framing it as an investment in their own retirement. The second camp proposed a much wider tax reform. It contains changes to almost every system of tariffs. Levies or taxes collected by the federal government. And the increase in revenue will leave us a lot of extra funding even after Social Security is provided for. This reform is certain to prove very hard to sell to the public. But the increase in funds gives the administration a lot of financial room to act going forward. And all will guarantee we want to raise taxes again for the foreseeable future. First option, you need to just fund Social Security. Second option, we need the money. The increase of both income and business taxes will be burdened, bundled with Social Security. Over a uh, seven, seven, seven weeks. Uh, so, so, oh my god, that sucks. Um, do we have enough? Oh, we might not have support with this. Uh, 12 plus 8 is 20. 44, we have enough. So 44 plus 11 is 55. So we do have enough already, which is nice and decent. Uh, not too much else down there, right? So, combat water pollution. Not bad, not bad. A good RDC campaign, good. We like to see the two. Oops, press R1. Ooh, current prediction plus ten. Oh, that's the Republican gains, huh? Um, Great Lakes, sure. The Grat Lacks. Medicare expansion bill attempt to be another bill through Congress. Support goes down. The work is never done. Yeah. So Social Security is finally passed and to ensure that Americans can, can comfortably retire without facing the third of poverty. If you're going to be a trial, believe as well. Please go right ahead. History missed. Um, However, there's much greater plans to pursue in order to fulfill the great society that President Johnson's envisioned for the United States, and we must remain diligent in moving forward. There's so many left unprotected and uninsured by the act, including younger individuals who still suffer from the worst effects of poverty. Greater programs will have to be created and more initiatives taken if we hope to build a society with no one lives without a safety net. When we start giving African nations a freedom. Strong. Disavow the Dixocrats. Improve civil rights, which I do want to do, but like, that's an election year, man. Two weeks, one week hurts conservatives. We'll wait till the very end to get that stuff done. Oh wait, what are we doing here on here? Oh, that's not good. That's actually very bad for us. But we're already pretty much trapped down here. But it passes. Yay! Um, the New Deal or success uh, marched on in Washington D.C. today as a, as the Senate passed a bill expanding Social Security, of course. Previous Social Security only covered the elderly, those over the age of 65. With expansion, however, the disabled of America will now be covered by Social Security. Due to their disabilities, many of these people are unable to work and live in poverty, suffering at the margins of society. No more thanks to President Johnson's bill. Thanks to a combination of hikes to income and payroll taxes, Social Security will vastly expand its reach, alleviate poverty, and still remain solvent. Many conservative critics had alleged that the program would ruin the federal government's finances, but thus far the books seem to be balancing. The bill's passage is another triumph for the President Johnson, the aide to do the disabled representing another plank in his platform for a great society. The new Social Security payments represent a new salve on the war on poverty, and President Johnson does not mean to call out the attack until his opponent's been obliterated. A helping hand where it's needed the most. Support the Democratic Party and the Nationalists, especially the rural voters. Replace shrink pensions with moderate pensions, increase GDP growth, uh, improve the social safety network of the country. Nice. Medicare and Medicaid expansion, uh, increase minimum benefits. Oh boy, Marxist cause. Marxist cause too. The Dr. Core, poverty begin to improve. Increase the cost. Hypothetical budget drafts. A radical proposal. Controversy to follow the RDC for 28 weeks. The right to life. Nobody left behind. Radicalizing us. But we can't do that one because we need a Fair Housing Act. A safety net. Our burdens are massive. Our troubles are many. 
but our virtues are great. 10% more stability, even though we lose 10% here. We lose 200, but you get 150 here. The right to liberty. We could race them through here and hurt ourselves pretty badly. But we get the support of Democrats, so. Our burdens are massive. At times, it might seem like any effort to provide a better life for all is futile. The United States is a nation of two, nearly 200 million people, and no matter how many we help, there will always be those who, some, who fall through the cracks. Our system is good and noble, but we must not grow complacent. There are always more people who need help to realize the full potential. President Johnson ponders this and wonders what can be done to ensure that the system continues to do best for our people. The conservatives are upset. Mr. President, I'm pleased to report on the most recent parts of a great society being voted on by Congress, and are ready for you to sign the law. These new actions are important, just like they all are, and they still have to help the majority supporting them in Congress and across the country, but there's some dark clouds on the horizon. Some Republicans voted against the last bill, some of those conservatives that like small government and pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and all that. While it wasn't enough to threaten the passing of these laws, it does mean that future laws will likely require that we work with a progressive faction of the MPP to ensure that we have enough support to pass through uh, an increasingly divided Congress. You should know as well as I do that, I, that this could be a problem in the future. The Republican Democrats were formed to keep the peace and stability of America first and foremost. If the RDC breaks apart, though, that can lead to a much greater crisis in, uh, 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 in the future. The message received. Still okay here. We're at 93%, so I'm not super concerned. Uh, 43 billion in surplus after we pass all that stuff. Uh, dead GP ratio is a third. Oh my god, why do we lose all that political power? I'm not just in a while. Just thank god. Thank the lord. Um, this is about the Dictocrats. The rest can, oh, excellent campaign. I like that a lot. Plus nine, still not bad, still not bad. They run a good campaign, We're doing our burns are massive. Massive. Um, I don't want to do any of these. Really, I just don't want to do this. It's horrible, uh, with the uh, we have Medicare and Medicaid expansion. We'll probably do that one. Medicare and Medicaid are flagship programs, the larger to former nation's health care, and they've proven valuable for the coverage of retired, disabled, and financially struggling Americans in this new age of broad health care coverage, however. These programs are both in dire need of an update. As the strain of bureaucracy increases, we'll need to expand Medicare and Medicaid and accommodate the needs of the growing body recipients. Now, millions rely on publicly funded insurance programs for the coverage, and the degree revitalization is necessary to manage burden. And the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. <clears throat> After months of preparation and revision by the cabinet, congressional committees, and various interest groups, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act can be proposed to the legislature. The bill contains numerous provisions, most important among them being the proportionment of funds to schools throughout the country to improve education in the school environment, how the administrators see fit. Included also in the bill's language is the encouragement for equality and racial and economic grounds so America's students can be free to receive a strong and equal education. Edja, edja, edjumications. You get one, I get one, no one gets one. Oh, look at that. Jesus. So bad. Oh, our work is never done. Oh, we've never forgotten. Uh, we, the end draws near for the Great Society. What? Medicare, food stamps, and Social Security, all those candles that have had their wicks lit. But now it's time for the flames to be calmed as we moved on. Calm the Republicans, united we stand. Huh? Happy June, everybody. Okay, it would increase. United we stand. We're a little more unified. Okay. City of West Africa. Oh, it is done. The West African War is over. Finally. Across new nations found in the wake of the PLAS collapse, hundreds of thousands have been dispatched or displaced. Um, and entire towns raised over the map. Orphans roam the land, searching for parents that would never come back home. America stares at a triumph. Uh, oh, God, no. There's no true victory until the liberty spreads its wings of the nations it has won. The nations of West Africa and the exiles of France cry for our help. They argue that only America's involvement in the reconstruction can save West Africa for itself. For our part, corporations like Firestone and DuPont are chomping the bit to exploit the resources in the region. President uh, Johnson has approved the initial pa aid packages and projects and is us up to ensure that we hold West Africa humanely. It's a hard task. The people of the U.S. believe that they are up to the task of helping the, these people rebuild and arise from their ashes. It's up to the administration to ensure that this belief does not remain a metaphysical object. The torture of liberty passes. Hey, we're back up to 10. Not bad. Uh, deep South. Yeah, there you go. Well, like I'm deep. Okay, so 30, 12, 10. None of the MPP. Snapshots from Stonewall. There's that one. 40, 52. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, God. Oh, I hate this part. Uh, military strength. This is, we're going to fail this. We're across West Africa, huh? Oh, my God. Uh. Well, I guess we might as well do that. A land survey. I 
all about alienating people. Roots. If you're under that, please go ahead. 43 billion is not bad though. Pretty nice. So any humanitarian aid slightly pro progresses. Slightly progress. Well, moderately progress. Or we can wait down here. And it passes. Nice. Um, yeah, we can wait down here because that will significantly progress, which is what we want. We can do this stuff as well. Student te student teachers, students, and parents across the nation can rejoice as the Primary Education Act's past sentence is now making its way to President Johnson's desk. The bill's provisions fair pair federal dollars with heightened educational standards for schools, using a care and sick approach to push schools to provide a quality education. Furthermore, the bill comes with anti discrimination provisions to guarantee quality in education and prevent the existence of a tiered education system. The bill found the support of much needed the RD coalition centers, as well as the progressives of the MPP. It is only opponents who are nationalists concerning about the use of the law to force the integration of schools and conservatives, who view this act as the latest instance of federal overreach. In spite of the opposition, the bill sallied to its passage, or sailed to its passage. Our schools across country are revamping curriculums and purchasing new materials. The positive effects of the legislation should become readily apparent as students learn more. The President Johnson, of course, can rejoice in another victory for pro progress and his coalition supporters. School's back in session. Nice. They are our future. Give more stability, which we don't really need, but improve the school system. The political power, they are our past. Of course, we, I do, do want some as well, but I don't want to hurt anything here. Decrease, decrease, attempt to pass a bill. Because this will alienate people too, somewhat. They are our past. President Johnson made one thing clear in his campaign to revive and stimulate the nation's education system. We must fund education, not only during youth, but also beyond it, through funding schools and universities alike. We'll create a fund uh, in which anyone can pursue a fulfilling career in adulthood made possible by young youth education. It's through the people who follow their love of knowledge and outside of school that we've reached this point, and by using their contributions, we can create the next generation of innovators. Yeah, I definitely want to wait for all this stuff, too. As much as I want to get it all done, don't get me wrong, I want to get it all done. So much point two two, which is pretty good. Schooling is doing way better, though. Healthcare is doing way better, too. Four other billion. Even though inflation is skyrocketing, whatever. And election season, by, hopefully we get 404 billion eventually. We'll see. There you go. Economic military strength. Go into that one, too. We're going to spend pretty much all our political power on this stuff here. I'm not so concerned about this one as much anymore, which is fine-ish. Of course, I do want to do this stuff as well. That would be important to do, too. We're weak on civil rights, but whatever. C'est la vie. Um, close. Atlantic ports. Economic stuff is important too, though. Moderately progress. Moderately progress. We'll do that one. It's a little more expensive right now. That's okay. 1968 National Progressive Primaries. If you're going to build that, please go right ahead. Michael Harrington. For Mike. We'll go with Margaret Chase Smith. We'll probably be guaranteed an election win if we go with her. An excellent RDC campaign. Oh, yes, please. Plus 10. I love it. We just campaign there, I guess. Uh, Zion, have Birch Bay, Democrat. Uh, we should be okay. Could hold a poll, but we don't really need to. Ah, oh, good. They run a misling, misery. Terrible campaign. Oh, science. 44 billion? That's eh, alright. It's for science. Polls are updated. Nice. Also, as you might see here, I also deleted the Navy. We don't believe in navies here in America. Economic progress is sucks right now. Um, go with that for now. So to this Firestone, we'll do that one, and then fun urban development next. And there you go. Military strength is not bad. That's pretty easy to do. Republican, Democrat, primaries. If you want to believe that, please go right ahead. And we'll do both these. Four more years. I hate this one so much. Uh, we could do more stuff down here too. Alright. Troubles are many. Funding our schools. They are our future. The importance of education on all levels is not, is, cannot be understated. Through greater funds through American schools and universities, we can create new opportunities for people looking for higher education that through no fault of their own lack the means to pay for tuition. Providing full education to all who need is not only a preference but a moral imperative. As people who we help now will be the ones who create new innovations. They revolutionize the world around them and more move society forward. To neglect those with these skills would be unjust. Absolutely. Over 400 billion? Nice. Just have to wait for that one more. Oh, I keep forgetting about this. Oh, crap. Because these guys came back with a vengeance, didn't they? Yeah, they're coming back. 
That is not good. I've let this go by too long. If this goes poorly for us, then I'll just have to reload the save and redo it. It's my fault. Oh, my bad. Yep, literally what I just said. But that sucks. Um, you know what? I'll redo that off screen because I, I screwed up on that one. So we could probably do this one too. Oh, Dr. Core. Probably be an improve. I don't want to isolate too many guys though. Putting on colleges. Establish teacher core. Yeah, why not? Teacher core is the next proposed program to kickstart education in low income communities across the nation. Through teachers' associations that specialize in community outreach. Areas throughout the U.S. would have each have individual projects headed by professors and institutions, specializing in higher education, who would then employ aspiring teachers as interns. These interns would teach, then teach students in disadvantaged communities, thus helping to lift disadvantaged communities and families out of the poverty cycle while getting valuable skills in the process. Hopefully, the program will help both teachers and students, but if you enjoyed our second episode of Making the Great Society, or American Society, even greater, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll fix Indonesia. And keep making America a better place. Thanks for watching, and have a poverty-free rest of your day.